Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Heartstring. Hello, Nathan Likes Drums. Happy Sunday. Hi, Sonja. All right, we got a few more joining the room. I'm going to ask that if you're in the room, that you go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Hello, Shadow Smith. Good to see you as well. Hello, Four Ducks. <laughs> All right, Four Ducks. Hello, Selena. Hello, Brittany. Hi, D. Blair. Hi, Military Mom. Everyone hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. We're going to get started here in just a second. I have 16 people in the room and only six thumbs up. I guess I offended someone and they dropped off, so 14. But I only have six thumbs up. Going to give the room just a little bit of time to build, and then we are going to dive in to the beast known as Beacon. Has so everyone had a great weekend? Thank you, military mom. Hi, Vader. All right, everyone. So it looks like I've got about 19 people in the room, I'm sure, or hopefully it will build a little bit more um, as we move through the conversation. Um, but this, hi, Susan. This is what I want to start with. I'm going to make a declaration. Um, and I, if you agree with this statement, I just want you to type um, IA for I agree. Okay. Hi, China. So again, I'm going to give a statement. If you agree with this statement, I just want you to type I A. A handbag is a very personal choice. If you agree with that, just type I A for I agree. All right. Hi, Amy. Hi, Teresa. All right. So, hi, Lady Slam. Welcome. So, we are pretty much in agreement. I've not seen anyone disagree that a handbag is a very personal choice. And the industry, from an accessory standpoint, I think is built on that fact that a handbag is a very personal choice. There are different sizes, different colors, different carrying styles, different weights. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Rose. Hello, Sabrina. Um, so the, the handbag industry knows that if they only make one bag, one size out of one particular material, that it is not going to satisfy all women because there are different needs um, different health reasons, right? Some people are okay with heavier bags. Some people need lighter weight bags that a handbag is a very personal choice. All right, so here's my next question for you. <clears throat> I'd like for you to just think about your house, okay? Now, if you are in a house where there is another woman that shares the kitchen, this may or may not be applicable for you. But I want those of you, whether it's an apartment kitchen, whether it's your um, kitchenette in a dorm room or a split, if it is your home, if you had your, let's start with a mother-in-law, right? You come home one day from work and your mother-in-law, your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your girlfriend, pick a woman, has gone into your kitchen and moved your silverware, your plates, your glasses, your cookware, and said, you've got those things in the wrong place. I'm just curious, what would your response be to that? Kim said, oh, no, she didn't, right? So you have another woman, okay, military mom would be concerned. Kim says, oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> the, 
Brittany says, no, not happening here, right? I'm in agreement with that. So let me just give you an example, and I promise you I'm going to tie it into our topic for today. So growing up in my mom's house, the top of the refrigerator, and I may have shared this story with you guys before, but the top of the refrigerator was extra storage space in the kitchen. Loaf of bread would be thrown up there, and that's where you could find it if you were looking for a sandwich. In the morning, if you were looking for cereal, cereal boxes were on top of the refrigerator because the boxes of cereal that my mom purchased were too tall to go into our kitchen um, cabinets. And the shelves, because it was an older house, were too short that they wouldn't go into the pantry standing up. So the top of the refrigerator was extra storage for her. I personally didn't care for that, but it was my mom's house. It was her kitchen. They were her rules. That's where the bread went into the bread box and that's where the cereal was stored. When I moved into my first apartment, I made the decision, my kitchen, my rules, I'm not storing stuff on top of the refrigerator. This is a place for decorative items. And the first time my mom came and stayed with me for a couple of days and we went grocery shopping, guess what ended up on the top of my refrigerator? Bread and cereal. And we had to have a conversation about your kitchen, your rules, my kitchen, my rules. So I say all of that to say that I have really gotten a kick this week out of reading some of the comments about this collection in this bag. And especially yesterday after I uploaded the, um, you know, what's going into my beacon and some of the comments were, um, well, lay your wallet a different way. Well, switch your wallet a different way. Do you really need two cosmetics bag? And I got a flashback to it's my kitchen, my way, right? So I know that as a community, we're very helpful and we all are asking for input and suggestions and stuff. But I want to tie it back to a handbag is a very personal thing. So. If one of those cosmetic cases, as an example, if one of them was being used as a cosmetic case and a catch-all in one, and the other was used, I don't know, for a glucose testing machine, would you feel the same way about, hey, she needs to take some things out of her bag? Would you feel that same way? Right. So back to a handbag is a very personal thing. The wallet that you like is a very personal thing. The way you organize your bag, very personal. The shoulder drop preference that you have for a bag, very preference. The material, very personal. Whether a bag is structured or not, very personal personal. So as we go through the discussion tonight, and I really want it to be a discussion, I want you to think about those two things as we make our comments and as we interact with people. There's no right or wrong. It simply is that a handbag is a very personal thing and my kitchen, my rules. And you can translate that kitchen into my handbag, my rules because I found a wallet that I like. I need both cosmetic cases right now because one I'm using as a cosmetic case, the other one I'm using as a tech case. And the reason I need a tech case is I have a charger for my phone, which is different from the charger that I need from my work phone, which is different from the charger that I need for my iPad which is different from the charger that I need for um, my, uh, my spare battery pack. So all of those things are essential. And I'm not one of those people that are at home every night. I'm in hotel rooms. So it's very important for me that when I'm on the road or when I have an extended day, that any one of those chargers, as an example, 
will come in handy. It will be essential for me. So handbag is a very personal choice and my kitchen, my rules. All right. So the beacon. I knew that this bag was going to be tea tiny when the box arrived. Hi, Ms. Uh, when the box arrived on my porch and I got two of them and I thought, there's no way that bag has those dimensions as fitting in that box. And I should have brought the box in here to show you, but I know a lot of you picked it up and are trying to decide. Um, so that's the first thing. I, I buy Based on the box size and the fact that I had already um, unboxed a large zip tote that I'd unboxed on camera and that everyone had kind of seen how big that box was. When this box arrived, I knew that it was not going to be good because either the bag was too small or they stuffed my too big bag in a too little box and that sent lava through my veins. So the size of the box was an indicator that this was probably not going to be the thing for me. I'm sorry, Vader. Um, we're gonna give it a try and then if it continues to cut out, then maybe what we'll do is end this stream and then sign back in. So what I wanted to do is start by showing you a an Alto bag that I have. And this is a bag that I paid full price for. I really, really wanted the bag. And because I really wanted it and paid full price for it for a long time um, and long time relative to the number of bags I have, it was my everyday bag. It, I moved into it and I lived in it. Um, the leather was stiff when I got it. It was flawless, not a scratch on it. Uh, and I loved her dearly and she has... Um, marks and dings and scratches and all that stuff on her now uh, to show our history together. And this is the bag. So I'm not sure if on camera, you can probably see like in this area, some of the um, love marks on her. And then on the side, you can see like some of the scratches and wear and shiny spots and stuff like that, right? Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of give you a tour of this bag. And this bag is now, even though it's Alto, it's squishy, it's soft because I carried her. Now, this is what I want you to notice about this leather. It did not start out this way, but as it has softened just a little bit with wear, as I have loaded her up, as I've carried her, as she's been in and out of airports all over the country, as she's been stuffed under airplane seats, as she's fallen off of the floor, off the seat onto the floor in my car, um, as my nephew has kicked her around you know she's at the, the bag is in in my floor space move yeah so <laughs> that this is kind of the history and the story of this bag and even though she is no longer flawless i love this bag and i love the fact that every mark every crease every ding every scratch every pucker i put on her. Okay. So handbag is very personal. I have caught all kinds of grief about being particular, especially about my Florentine. Well, I want the opportunity to give my bag her birthmarks. I don't want her to come with them. I acknowledge that it's a hide. I acknowledge that um, you know, it's an animal and that there are going to be imperfections. Yes. 
But there are some things that from a material standpoint, we don't have to settle for because that bag would absolutely be a great bag for someone else. Now, I want to talk about this leather. I, just like I don't worry about rain on my Florentine, I don't worry about rain on my Alto bags either. And I was questioning whether or not the information that we got during the TSV presentation, thank you, Ems. Um, I was questioning whether or not that leather was treated or not, that leather being the beacon leather. Because I didn't recall for sure if Sue Clifton said that it was or if she omitted that. But if you know anything about Vaquetta leather, the, the, the definition of Vaquetta is untreated, right? So if I'm thinking about the kind of leather that the bag is made out of and what Vaquetta leather is, which is untreated um, leather, it's, it's gonna naturally tan, it's gonna absorb oils and sunlight, it's gonna gradually darken then that's what I would expect from this beacon collection. Hi, I'm purse happy too. So Kimberly Mines, Kim, you can call me later or text me. I'll watch my phone, did a little bit of a science experiment and she shared it with the tribe. And what I will tell you is based on her research, I'm not worried about this bag in weather, in inclement weather. Whether that's snow, sleet, rain, I'd probably be a little concerned about hail, but I'm not worried about um, inclement weather with this leather. So it is treated in some way, in some form, in some fashion um, that helps the bag to maintain its matte finish, its color, um, the beauty of the leather. And I'm going to just kind of leave that right there and just say I'm not worried about that. And I appreciate Kim um, for experimenting. And if you are interested in seeing what her experiment was, then you can, after this live stream, that video will be available on her channel so that you can actually see for your own eyes what that leather is all about. So that's that. All right. Next. If you know anything or if you have researched leathers, there are all different kinds of leather, but leather is processed. It all starts as a hide, unless it's faux leather. But real leathers are all processed. In other words, there is an animal hide, whether that's a lamb, whether that's a cow, whether it's a you know, whatever. And the hair from that, from that skin is removed. And then a full grain of leather is that entire hide process with the with the um, with the with the hair fibers removed. A top grain leather is when that hide is processed and it is literally split, and the top part of the leather is. The top, I'm reading a comment. So the top part of that leather is what you pay top dollar for, or you know, that's premium leather. It's called top grain. And then everything below that is where you get your suede from. It's where the leather is actually ground up and you get like leather filler, which is used in some furniture, like at a rooms to go or something like that because it's not a full leather sofa, right? But it has leather particulates in it. Just want you to kind of understand. 
Vaketa is considered not to be a top grade leather, all right? It's a good leather, but it's a trim. It's what you usually used in a trim. It's not what you normally make a bag out of. It's what your corner pieces are made out of. It is um, RJ Cox Paranormal. I, I Once I hit double digits on bags, I stopped counting and I honestly could not tell you how many bags I own. Not interested in counting them either. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but that the leather vaquetta became popular with LV bags because that's what the trim is made out of, right? So if you know anybody that's all into LV, they want their leather, their their trim to patina evenly, and there are all kinds of videos. Hi Ashley, all kind of videos out there that show you how to. Um, you know, ensure that your bag patinas evenly so that that trim is even all across. Tons, tons of information out there on Vaquetta Leather. All right. So moving on, we've talked about the leather. Now, let's talk about the QVC presentation of this bag. So let's start with the fact that they gave the wrong dimensions in the presentation for this bag. So I, I've not seen Ivana in the room. Um, hi, Charlie Six. Hi, Harold. This bag, hi, Poke. This bag would have been a perfect My Pursuit of Happiness bag. This bag size is an Ivana size bag. It's bigger than her small Mindy but it's not as large as the big Mindy. It's not as large as the um, East West tote in the Cambridge collection. Um, it's not as big as the large pocket sack. It's slightly, um, slightly larger than the Charleston shopper. Just kind of to give you some size comparisons of, of the size of this bag, right? So QVC gave the wrong dang blasted dimensions on the bag. So here we go. So on the Dooney and Burke website, Dooney says that the bag has an eight inch strap drop, eight inches, that the bag is 10 and a quarter inches high that it is four and three quarters from front to back, so depth, and from left to right, it's 12 inches long. That's according to Dooney. Don't wanna go religious on you, but my pastor always says that you as a person cannot define what, you're, what you were created for. You can't determine your own purpose. Your creator determines your purpose. I bring that up to say, QVC can't tell me the dimensions of the bag correctly. So I'm going back to the creator, which is Dooney. And they said it has an eight inch shoulder drop, that it is 10 and a quarter high, four and three quarters deep and 12 inches long. Well, QVC says that the bag is 13 and a half. Mm -mm, it's not 13 and a half. There's no way. It's not 13 and a half. I measured. It's not. They say that it's 10 and a quarter high. They got that right. We I agree with that. And they say that it's four and three quarters deep. I agree with that. But they got the width wrong. And they said that the shoulder drop was eight and a half. It's not, it's eight, and it's not a comfortable eight either. So, Beacon, wrong dimensions on the TSV. So, for a $268 bag, which I believe should have really been priced around $234 retail, they gave us at $199.27, which according to my math at 238, 
was only about the normal $40 off of a bag. The fact that this bag, when has QVC ever brought a bag to us that was at retail as a TSV? Just think about that. It's usually an exclusive um, made just for them. It's not something that you can readily find, readily find available at Macy's or Dillard's or any of those other places. So I just think that it was kind of botched from the beginning. Now, Sue said that she'd been, I think she said, New York, Atlanta, Denver, and to Pennsylvania with this bag. And it had been under the plane seat with no scratches, no dings. I didn't believe that when she said it during the presentation. But now that I have this bag in my possession, I do believe it because it's small enough to fit under a plane seat without getting dinged and scratched and kicked around. So I believe that in her travels, if she was using the bag with the dimensions that was shipped and not a larger bag, then it's absolutely possible to get this bag under an airplane seat and not have it dinged and scratched up because it's a small bag. The short shoulder strap drop. So I DVR, just like many of you, I DVR the um, Dooney presentations on QVC when they air. I do that for research. I do it for reference. I do it so that I can go back and hear specifically what they've said about a particular bag. I go back and watch to see how the model styled it, how they carried it, how was it placed on the arm? Did everybody... Um, did it clear everyone's elbow test or did some people have to slide the bag up their arm in order to get it on their shoulder? Um, I also do it because I'm weird and that when there's not anything on TV and I'm in a Dooney withdrawal mode, I will literally go back and watch that footage. Hit the thumbs up for me. I've got 66 people in the room, but only 21 thumbs up. So I keep those. So I'll go back and watch. And what I notice is that not anyone that modeled this bag during the presentation passed the elbow test. Everyone carried it over the crook of the arm. They carried it by the handle. They actually took the handle and slid the straps up their arm to carry it. But not a single person past the elbow test and everybody's elbow test is different. So going back, being able to watch that in real time, right? Things that as you are watching presentations and you're really trying to get the feel for a scale of a bag and whether it's going to work for you, for me, that's the level of detail that I watch that presentation with. And that's the reason why Thanks, Ems. I'm glad I'm not alone. But that's also the reason that I DVR them, especially if I'm, I've am i purchased a bag and it's new, it's a new silhouette, it's a new leather. What did they say about it? Um, if it is a bag that I have on my wish list or that I'm contemplating, I'll record it and watch it to, to help me make a decision on whether or not I'm going to be happy with that bag in my collection. So the short shoulder strap is short. And I would dare to say that with this eight inch drop that maybe my niece who's in high school could, oh, I'm looking at it. She probably could. My sister, because she's, you know, she's got long arms. She's got a I don't think this would pass an elbow test for her either, even at eight inches. So that's that's where we are with the shoulder drop. Now, for me, TSVs with QVC have been disappointing and I've not purchased a lot of them. Like Lillian, I purchased her, I sent her back. Brenna purchased, sent back. Um, what was Ashby didn't even to North South, didn't even take the plunge, even though I wanted that accessory piece, just decided she's not going to work for me. 
And I think that the only reason that Maddie worked, and I noticed from the comments that a lot of you were more interested in Maddie than the actual Beacon collection. Maybe I need to go back and talk to her about her in a video. Um, but if it were not for Maddie having the adjustable shoulder straps, she would not have worked. And the Janine that I picked up a couple of years back in Patton, had it not been a um, crop intended to, for as a crossbody with an adjustable strap where you can carry it by the um, the short four inch handles, it probably wouldn't have worked for me either. So I'm at a point where I'm about to X TSVs from QVC because they don't work for me. This bag is proof yet again that a TSV, even if it's coming out of retail, is not going to work for me. Hi, Mrs. Q. Hi, Bev. Hi, Mama Mukbang. All right, let's talk about this leather. This leather, the color saturation that it takes is phenomenal. <laughs> I'm not the color. Now, I don't know what happened with Bordeaux because even Kim said, um, I'm not too sure that this, they got the color right. Um, when I showed it in the video, a lot of your comments in an earlier video said, looks brown to me. It looked brown to me too. It looked brown in the dark. It looked brown under light. It looked um, brown under my studio lights. It looked brown in Macy's under retail lights. And those retail lights are designed to draw you in to part ways with your money and leave with their stuff. And it still looked brown, right? So other than the Bordeaux color, this leather takes color like nobody's business. What I want to show you is DJ King in here. I am blaming DJ King and Kimberly Mines for this second bag purchase. Is DJ in here? DJ King, are you in here? I'm looking for you. So you all know that I picked up the mustard. It's been in my videos. We've talked about it. I'm going to deep dive that one. But I'm a sucker for red, and after the Bordeaux was so flat and a flop, hi, Karen, I decided that I was going to take the plunge and get the red. Just in case I really like the bag, of course, I wouldn't want to miss out on the red. I think in um, a, my last video, I even told you that if you are on the fence about red, like if you're unsure about carrying a red bag, can it be a neutral? Can it serve as a pop of color? You're just barely ready to dip your toe in the land of red handbags. This red in the Beacon collection is the perfect starter red. So here she is. Um, I did a dry run yesterday with a Dooney attic here in the city, and we actually unboxed this together in the back of um, my vehicle yesterday. And we both agreed that this red, baby, let me tell you, <laughs> this is a pretty red. It's not alto red, right? Cause this is your fire engine. I'm not afraid of red power bag walk into a business meeting and I'm not here, look at my back. That's what this red is. This red right here is, you don't know whether I'm a sneaker or a sleeper or a powerhouse, but red all the same. It's a beautiful red. Color saturation is absolutely phenomenal. I love this red. I love this red. I don't have any other bag in my collection that is the same color red as this red in the Beacon collection, okay? Love this red. The color payoff, whether it's olive or natural, 
Do y'all see the French blue in the Macy's tour that I did? The color from this collection is absolutely amazing. If your concern is about the color, take the plunge, order the color that you like, assuming it's not Bordeaux because that's gonna be brown. If you're looking for a brown bag, order that one. The French blue was gorgeous. I'm not a lover of olive, but the olive was very color saturated, very pretty. It was not a flat olive. Um, there were some rich undertones in that olive. The black, if you know, um, it was not a charcoal black. It is a soot black, like a true black. And you know, if I'm talking about a black, it's gotta be serious. And the stitch work on that top stitch on that black, classic, clean, could be dressed up, dressed down. Very, very nice in black. But let's talk about this mustard. All right. The reason I got the mustard is because it's a pop of color. If you have followed Florentine, like in the medium satchel or the Buckley, you know that colors like Palomino or Sunflower or Dandelion, those colors go quick. They're hard to come by. And when you have them in your collection, even if you're not carrying them all the time, those are bags that most people just don't part ways with. I picked up, it's probably two summers ago now, yeah, two summers ago, a pair of Clark's wedges. And I had these in mind for summer wear when I added the mustard to my cart. Mustard is gonna be perfect through the fall. That color is in right now, but mustard in the summertime and actually having tops and dresses and shoes and things to tie all of that together absolutely is the reason that when I went back for the TSV, mustard no doubt went into the cart and it was because of Kimberly Mines and that DJ King that I added red into, um, actually made a second purchase. It wasn't even the same cart. So these are Clark's. If anybody's looking for them, they're not an exact match to the mustard. But because my bag is up here and my shoes are down here, um, I wore them yesterday um, out to brunch. I wore them today to church and carried this bag and they worked perfectly. So much, in fact, that I got stopped by three ladies and Macy's in the shoe department that asked if they had the shoes at Macy's because they'd already been through the handbag section and seen the bag. And I told them no, but where they could find them. Um, so it, it works. The color works. Those same ladies ended up at my salad spot for dinner. And when they walked in, they were like, hey, there's the lady with the mustard handbag again. Stopped me dead in my tracks. And I remembered them from Macy's, which was not too far away um, from where we were eating. But again, I've got plenty of red, but to find mustard, I absolutely loved it. So I'll tell you whether or not at the end of this video, whether what I'm going to do with this bag. All right. Color saturation. Perfect. Those are Clark sandals. Uh, wedges. Picked them up from QVC. If you're looking for them, if you are looking for mustard or want it, you know, to combo your stuff together. All right. So. Let's talk about this leather. I have not inspected this bag yet to see if it has any dings or scratches on it. I thought we would take a look at that together. I have not babied this bag. 
Quite the contrary. I wanted to see if it was going to really hold up um, so that I could make an informed um, decision about my purchase and so that I could give you my real experience about this bag and this leather after carrying it. Because my first bag, it was just an unboxing, right? And we talked about what I unboxed, but I didn't have a point of reference with the bag. Okay. So here she is. She is loaded down. I did get my last two items in the bag. And if you're curious about what those last two items are, you can go back and check on um, the last video. I've got my clipper on here and I'm glad I did because the restaurant where I had brunch yesterday um, did not have hooks in the ladies room. So if you don't have one of those, get one. My keys here. Hi, Uncle Jimmy. Everyone say hi to my uncle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's not into purses, but I've turned everybody in his household into purse lovers. So don't beat me up. All right. So this bag, shoulder drop, drop is a no for me. It's an absolute no. The wear of the bag from a scratch ding standpoint, I really thought that after this bag fell off my front seat a couple of times and got um, tossed around a little bit yesterday while I was out and about, um, it sat on the floor today at church because I wanted to see what the wear on the bottom um, was gonna be like. I have not seen a single scratch or shiny spot on this bag, not one. So what that tells me from my personal experience is that the darker the leather is on this bag, in this collection, the more you are going to see the wear of the leather. But if you go with the lighter colors, like the, the olive, the mustard, I'm not sure about the red, I don't think that they are going to show those scratches and shiny wear spots that we saw on the Bordeaux as much or at all because I've not noticed it on this. I'm planning to carry this bag for another week, but in the four days that I've carried it, I've not noticed any of that. But let me share with you what I did notice. Is Quita in the room? So... Quita sent me pictures. I think Mocha Mom uh, posted pictures. Um, the Pecan Tan Beauty showed a video. Um, I think Mrs. Q, we talked about it a little bit in your chat that, that this, there's something about the wear on it that causes it to, to wrinkle or to crinkle or to look like it's separating or that it's going to peel. And I don't know if you can see it in like this part where I've been pulling back and forth. And let me see if there's another spot that's a little bit better, like here. Uh, the lights are washing it out. But the, the exact same wear that was out of the box on the Bordeaux one is what has happened to this one as I've carried it. So gosh, maybe we don't ever notice it on Vaquetta leather because it's on the trim, it's on the side of the bag. We expect it to get a little dinged up. It's, you know, it's it's a corner protector, but having the entire bag made out of this, that's not for me, it's not for me. The other thing about this bag, the pockets on the outside, Y'all see 
how my phone is in a case. It's not in a bulky case. I should probably have it in a bulky case because I've cracked my screen protector. But even my phone in the case was a tight fit in the outside pocket. That's not good. I had to squeeze. Let me show you. This pocket has Kleenex in it. Y'all know what Kleenex, a little pack of Kleenex, soft pack Kleenex, and it causes that pocket to stretch. I had gum in here and a flat pack of gum even caused, just regular gum, not even the double pack, caused that pocket to stretch. Now keep in mind that everything that I had in the Maddie front pocket, I had to split between two pockets, front and back, on this bag. She's not a workhorse. She's not. She's not going to take the wear and tear and it not be visible. Exactly, Ems. It's tough enough for corners to protect the corner of your bag, but I, for me, again, go back to the, the first two rules that we said in the beginning of the chat today. Remember, a handbag is a very personal thing. And we said, my kitchen, my rules. There may be some people that are not as hard on their bags that this leather is absolutely perfect for. Um, there may be small to medium bag carriers that this size is perfect for. There may be people that them doing their shoulder test is very different from the way that I do mine and the clearance that I look for. So this bag may be perfect for them. The person that um, maybe hangs their sunglasses over the outside of their bag and um, doesn't have their phone in a case, these outside pockets may be perfect. Uh, the fact that it has, um, it, those, those are things that you have to decide. This is not going to work for me. And QVC is going to have to give me my money back because it's not going to work and because you were not truthful in the dimensions of the bag when you gave the presentation. And I made my purchase based on the information that you shared with me at the time and what I thought I purchased and what arrived were two different things. That simple. Two, two totally different things. Color saturation, great. Love the simplicity of the hardware. The fact that the leather is what catches your eye for this bag. Clean, smooth profile. If you are a lover of the Alto collection, but would absolutely never, ever, ever spend that money on an Alto leather bag, and you're not looking for an everyday carry, the Beacon collection is the way to go, especially if you can get it at 20 or more percent off. And 20% right now at retail off is a big thing, right? But if the things that I've shared with you today are deal breakers, things that make you look the other way on a bag, then this is not the collection for you. Now, Peter Dooney. We've had this conversation before, but we need to get back on the same page. I'm not sure whether the maintenance of Dooney.com is done internally or whether um, Dooney is paying a third party to maintain it. I'm not sure if that third party, if it is a third party, is responsible for updating new arrivals based on the information that is provided from Dooney to the third party for them to update new arrivals, 
or if it's being done internally. And maybe if their organization is like any of the ones I've worked in, sometimes, you know, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. You may be responsible for updating the website. But if nobody's telling you that there's new stuff that needs to be added, then there's a miss. What I'm saying is right now, Peter has a miss on the new arrivals section of the website. And I'm going to, I'm going to, again, bear with me. I'm going to bring it full circle again for you. There are new collections out on the site S collections that if this beacon collection has you saying, nah, brah, I'm not doing that. I'm not, mm -mm. Nope, haven't seen anything good consistently enough for you me to give you your my give you my money. Not adding it to my list for the tent sale. Not looking for it for the twelve days of Dooney. Miss me with this collection. If that's your thought on Beacon, then go out and look for some of the new collections on Dooney, and they're not under the new arrivals where they should be. But if you liked the feel of the look of the Toscana leather, the fact that it was in the Florentine family, if you recall the edge collection from several years back, this new collection, I think it's called Solaria. I think. Suz, did I get the name right? It's a cross between Toscana and the edge collection. The bag that caught my eye that went on my wish list has a 14 inch shoulder drop, double straps, 14 inch shoulder drop, not eight. And I got to slide it up my arm to get it on my shoulder. I'm talking about serious, no worry about the shoulder drop test. It passes. You would literally have to have arms like the size of an elephant's foot not to be able to get that bag on your shoulder. Go check those out. Why did I bring that up? I brought it up for this reason. If you have made a couple of purchases directly from Dooney.com, if you provided them with your email address, then thank you, Kimberly Mines, for pointing me in the right direction. So I want to give credit where credit is due. Dooney sent out on Friday. Did I get the date right, Kim? Friday morning. A penny for your thoughts survey. And they asked a lot of questions about the things we've been talking about on here and the things that we've been telling them that we want, the things that we've been telling them that we will spend our money on. They finally put together a survey to say, all right, is this just Dooney Attic saying this? Or are y'all really wanting to see these things added to your collection? Is it just Dooney Attic being a mouthpiece and entertaining on Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern? Or are there other people that really would like to see us do some other things with the brand? So they published a survey. They gave a free form comment field, which I was probably typing in for about 20 minutes of feedback, things we've talked about on here, stuff I want to see, stuff they need to get rid of. Can we get some Saturday customer service hours? Can we get some extended hours on Friday evening? Can I please be able to get a price adjustment on something, even if it's just within a seven day window? If it goes on sale, why can't I track my order? Can we get some vintage stuff that's available all the time because there are new people discovering the brand all the time? I wore that comment section out. If we want to be heard, go check your spam mail, your junk mail, and complete the survey. And in exchange for the survey information, you get a 20% off of one full price item um, as a way of saying thank you for a penny for your thoughts. Now, listen to me before you go take the survey, because I already know of one or two people that have missed it. They are not, I repeat, they are not going to email you the discount code. The discount code pops up on the confirmation page when you submit your survey results. 
So you either need to screenshot, jot it down, cut and paste it directly over and go ahead and place your order. But you have until the 29th of this month to get 20% off for completing the survey. <laughs> yes, Quita. I as soon as I got the 20%, I was like, all right, I already know what I want to use mine on. But even if you aren't planning to purchase, even if you're putting money aside for the cruise to Cuba, even if you're preparing for the tent sale, even if you're already, you know, putting your pennies away for Vegas next year, don't leave us hanging. Join us in completing the survey so that our voice as a community can be heard by our brand. One full size, one regular price item, 20% off. If you complete the survey, they are not going to email you the code. It pops up on the screen as soon as you submit and even says on the screen, because reading is fundamental, it states we will not email this code. Write it down. It says that. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but it does say, we will not be emailing you this code. Please make a note of the code for your record. The code must be used and it gives the September the 29th deadline. Following directions is gonna be key. If you aren't interested in the 20%, email me your code. If you just wanna participate in the survey and you don't need the code, just send me your code, email it to dunianic615 at hotmail.com. Yes, Mrs. Q, reading is fundamental and somebody will complete it, submit it, go to their email and look for a 20% off code and it will be gone, lost forever. And it is one code per email address. And I have stuff coming to all of my email addresses, but... If you complete the survey on your iPad and then you go and open up your other email to get that survey, it's going to say you have already completed this survey because it's recognizing the IP address. So you need to do it on a different device for each email address that you have. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to everyone because I already know and have heard from a couple of people that said, I did the survey and I didn't get my code. You got a code. It was on the submission screen. All right. 20% off. Don't miss it if you've got something in your cart full price that you want to purchase. All right. September 22nd. Why is that date important? September 22nd is important because it will be another Dooney on QVC Saturday. And on 923, there will be a Dooney on QVC Sunday. Don't miss out. Go ahead and set your DVR. Put the reminder in your calendar. It's not going to be at midnight. So we're not going to get a TSV back to back, but there will be airings, two different airings on Saturday, if I got it down correctly, and then one on Sunday. The one on Sunday, I think, is like from 1 to 3 a.m., I think, is what that is all about. Um, let me check my notes real quick and make sure I've covered everything. Our cruise group grew by two yesterday. If you have not registered for Cuba 2019, the sale on the deposit has gone off, but the group is still open. It would be July 1st through the 5th. The first 5 p.m. leaving from Miami, from the port in Miami. We will sail uh, from the 1st to the 2nd. To Cuba. We will spend all day on the 2nd from 6 a.m. on the 2nd in Cuba until um, the th morning of the 3rd. We will get back on the boat and sail to the Bahamas and spend the 4th of July in the Bahamas and then leave the Bahamas at 5 p.m. and sail back 
to Miami, January 1st through the 5th, 2019 on Norwegian Cruise Line. If you are interested, the information is posted in a video um, in my on my page that has Cuba, like no place else is what the thumbnail says. So if you're interested in that, you don't want to miss out. The group grew by two last night. We are going to have a ball. All right. I'm going to go back and look at the comments and see what I missed. And then I'm going to wrap up by telling you she's going back. But I hate that she's going back. And I'm hoping that these colors will be found in... I'll, uh, Teresa, I'll email you the, the information for Clippa. And that clip holds up to 33 pounds. And I carry, my bags are loaded down, but even I don't have 33 pounds worth of stuff in my bag. I literally used it to hold my travel bag. If you go to my um, Instagram page, you'll see where um, I've used it to carry, to hold all kinds of stuff when there's not enough um space in a ladies room if there's not a hook if there are not enough hooks these are perfect and clippa was actually um one of the sponsors for the meet and greet in chicago um they provided everyone that was in attendance with a clippa in the swag bags um and they did it in uh, this goal because it matches most of the hardware on our dooney bag so thank you for um being a sponsor for our meet and greet clip, but we really appreciate that. All right, so let me go back and look at the comments because this has been a very interactive chat, just the way I wanted it. All right, I'm not sure that I spoke to everyone in the room, but if I missed you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I usually get everyone, but I don't know that I know where I stopped. Hi, Ange. I know I didn't speak to you. All right. Um, for the tent sale, make your list if you are going to the tent sale. There will be another video soon to help you prepare for the next wave um, of prep if you're going to be at the tent sale and with the tribe. So that will only apply to the tribe. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, there will also be another video coming soon on next steps for Cuba. I would just like to remind everyone that you must have a visa, a Cuban visa. And you must have a passport. Passport is for U.S. The visa is for Cuba. You must have both. One to get out and into the U.S. on return. The other is so that the country of Cuba grants you permission to be there so that you can arrive and depart. If you are not doing applying for your Cuban visa on your own, then you can pay Norwegian, a $75 flat fee, and they will take care of the Cuban visa for you, but you are on your own for applying for your passport. Your passport cannot expire within six months of travel to Cuba. So if your passport is set to expire in January of next year, you need to go ahead and renew your passport because you will not be able to travel with it in July. All right, let's see. Is Uncle Jimmy still in here? He may have ditched me. Vader, if you email me, I'll send you the information for um, the Clippa site as well because I don't, I don't have her information handy, but they do have a website and they're selling through Amazon. But I don't, hold on, let me look on my desk here. I don't think I have her card here, but I will, 
um, if you email me, I will email it back to you. And then afterwards, I will find um, the company information or I'll email Trish and get it and post it in the info in the info box. So I'm first happy to, yes, I am sending back the mustard and the red. Not happy about it because I had big plans for the mustard. I had big plans for this collection because I felt like I was a little bit biased in my first review because I didn't carry it. It was just my first impression. Um, but now having carried it and really feeling like I've given her a fair shot, I don't feel, I feel bad that I can't keep the color, but I don't feel bad about uh, my opinions of this leather, this bag, this size, QVC's presentation. I don't feel bad about that at all. Um, and I know that many of you are either on the fence about it about this collection going forward. There are some of you that made the purchase that are unsure about whether you're going to keep it or not. There are some of you that are thankful after seeing all of the, you know, the feedback and stuff, the videos, the comments are glad that you didn't take um, the plunge. But I guess I look at this like, you know, broccoli or Brussels sprouts. If you never try it, then you don't know if you like it. You don't know if it's going to work for you. And that's how I felt um, after my unboxing of the Bordeaux in the large. And that's why I posted the video during the TSV, letting everybody know, hey, I, I, I succumbed to the pressure and I went ahead and I placed an order because I wanted to be fair and balanced. And I didn't feel like I did that in my first impression because it was just that a first impression. But they got to give me my money back. I don't have money to throw away like that, especially on something that I'm not going to carry. I do want to remind you that as soon as this video is over to go over to Kimberly Mines so that you can see another perspective on the wear durability of this leather. I'm not going to give it away, but make sure you go over and check out Kimberly Mines. And if you are not subscribed to her channel, I'm going to need you to hit the subscribe button and the bell. I'm going to I'm going to ask that you do that. Great. Great video coming. All right. So it sounds like just from my review of the comments that um, for the most part, you're in agreement with um, at least my two cents on the collection. I know that there will be some people that this will absolutely work for. And being stopped over the last two days, shoes, bag, bag alone, it, it's, it's an eye turner. The color is gorgeous, but it's just not going to work for me. Not at all. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. All right. For those of you that are in the Atlanta metro area, I think we have four more spots available for our D&B Dooney and, uh, Dooney and brunch event on the 29th at Copeland's at 1130. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, we have four more spots available. It's going to be a small, intimate group, um, but I do have spots available for four more people if you're interested in that. Um, I've gone over the information for the cruise. You've seen Alto. You've gotten a color comparison. You've gotten my thoughts on the carry of Beacon, um, and we are over an hour so I'm going to get ready to shut it down. Please make sure that you are checking out the channels of Kimberly Mimes, Sonja Covington, Suz What, 
my pursuit of happiness, Mrs. Q, and make sure that you have your bell on so that you can check out Mrs. Q on Friday evenings live. She is going to absolutely bring you up to speed on who's having sales, promotions, what to look out for with codes, who has what, if you are shopping for um, not only Dooney, um, but she covers Brahmin as well. Um, there are occasionally some call outs on coach. So make sure that you are checking out Mrs. Q's live stream. She's usually live 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday, 7 p.m. Um, Central Time. Uh, Pauline Newman streams live on Saturday morning. And then I close out your weekend on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. I have a list of things to talk about coming up on our live streams. So please make sure that you keep coming back. If you have not hit the thumbs up, I ask that you do so before you head out. Do not forget to go by uh, Kimberly Mines channel. If you are looking for the military mom, um, we said got a, a, a group ch a text saying that she has dropped the handbagger from her channel. So it's the military mom. Make sure you check out her channel. Um, I know that we've all been a little traumatized by her content, but we still love you, military mom. <laughs> um, who else's channel? Uh, D Blair, M Squared. Um, uh, who else's channel am I forgetting? Uh, Baghound, are you in here? Baghound, make sure that you're checking out the What's on my wish list? What's in my Dooney shopping cart? There's some great content out here from this community. I'm sure there is more to come. We all have different thoughts and opinions on Beacon. I will tell you that we discovered yesterday that the domed satchel in the Beacon collection is only nine and a half inches tall. So if you like the idea of a domed satchel, but you are looking for a smaller bag, this may be the collection for you if you can get over the leather and you can find a color. But if your preference is a larger um you know, dome satchel, then this again is not going to be the collection for you. The bags that are at retail are small to medium at best. If you are looking for the larger bags in this collection, then you're going to absolutely have to go um, to QVC or directly to Dooney.com. So that is all I have for you today. I cannot urge you enough to go over to Kimberly Mines channel as soon as we are done here so that you can see more information on this beacon collection. It may be something that you see over there that completely changes your mind about the leather, the collection, um, the durability. But remember, we had two rules for the chat today. And just keep that in mind, not only for this collection, but every time that we are talking about handbags, and that is that a handbag is a very personal choice. And my kitchen, my rules. If you signed in late and you don't know what that reference is, I ask you to go back and watch the replay once this video uploads to YouTube. But here she is. Here they are. But for now, I'll just have to continue to use my Buckley and Sunflower because mustard in the Beacon Collection is a no-go. Thank you so very much for watching, everyone. Until next time, I do hope that you're finding something that feeds your Dooney addiction. Take care.